Hey everyone, this is an introduction to Jed's Half-Life Model Viewer for the Gold Source engine. Now, Jed's Half-Life Model Viewer, rather than the original Half-Life Model Viewer from Meet Kerrigan, uh, is really the preferred tool when it comes to working with Gold Source models, be it for Half-Life, Counter-Strike 1.6, Day of Defeat, Blue Shift, Posing Force, etc. Any Gold Source model. It's, it's used more often, I believe, in the industry for modding and such because it has more features and is a cleaner interface than the original uh, you can download Half-Life Model Viewer both from uh, my site source modding or from the original uh, at wonderboy.org you can find the download section here uh, the installation is, is here HLMV136 setup and I would also recommend getting Studio MTL and the model decompiler and placing the, these two executable files next to the installed Half-Life Model Viewer simply for ease of use later on when both compiling and decompiling models for the engine. Now once you've downloaded and installed it you will run it and you will be presented with a screen much like this. So just build a little bit of real estate here for ourselves and here it is basically simple box standard model viewer simpler even than the one available for source uh, but if you're at all familiar with the model viewer with source engine it's basically the same thing possibly more watered down because of obviously the gold source engine has less features than the source engine okay so I'll start off and I'll just load a model so we have something to look at real quick uh, air ground so let's get one to start with and that's simply how you load a model. The controls for rot for moving in the viewport uh, would be to click and drag the left mouse button around and you will orbit the model around its axis. If you right click and drag up and down or in and out, well mostly up and down I think is the reaction axis, you will zoom in and out if you hold down shift and left click you will pan while dragging the model and control left click will move the light source you can vaguely see it there on the model the shading is changing okay and that takes us to the menu bar which I'll run through quickly file load model we've seen this you can load a background texture uh, it's something that has to be a bitmap of some sort 8-bit and you just load it in you can load a ground texture much the same way you can also unload the ground texture if you need to you can save the currently selected model as an MDL file you can open a half-life package so navigate to your steam installation to your half-life game or whichever gold source game you happen to be working on and look for uh, any of these kind of files. I think GCF is a uh, outdated now ever since SteamPipe, but you can pick, for instance, a pack file. Uh, let's have a look for a pack file if we actually have one with the game. I don't think we do. To look for a wad rather, we should find one here. There we go. Half life dot wad, which holds texture information. Uh, the root of the wad, and it contains all these images. So you can simply double click, and it'll open the files that are inside this WAD file in your preferred image viewer. Uh, the same goes for a pack file if you can get one. You can both load a model and play a sound from within the model viewer. Which brings us to the next option which is to close the Half-Life package so it's currently open. You get a selection list of recent models and recent package files which is handy. Up to the options tab we have background color so if we did not have a background set at the moment we can just set a nice dark gray as our background color and turn off show background which would change the background color now it doesn't have a, 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 I, might, I might have changed anything but for proof of concept and to make your eyes bleed <laughs> we set it to nice red we'll just set this back to gray so I don't give anybody a fit we can change the ground color so right real quick I'm just going to show ground here, so you can see that it's a lovely brown color. Let's make it some other kind of color here. There's a nice weird green color. 
no use to us at all. I'm just going to turn the ground off again. Um, what else have we got here? Light color, we can change the light color. Let's give it, okay, well, blue's not going to come off well since he's got blue. Let's try something like a pink. And there you go, you can see that it's messed up the ambient color. The area holding down control and left mouse click, like I said earlier, lets you orbit the light source around. So you can check out the shading and self shadowing in certain areas. Okay, what else have we got here? We have a crosshair color. Now, the crosshair you can't actually see unless you're in Weapon Origin and you enable Show Crosshair, but in this case it's red, so let's change it to blue and it'll change. Alright, so much for that. Back to model display. Uh, center view, we'll center the model. Actually, I'm going to change the light color back because it's bugging me slightly. <laughs> Sorry. There we are, back to the box standard coloring. Center the view, we'll center the view now. If you wanted to make some nice pose for your model that you've just spent years laboring on and you want to make some nice model for your portfolio, you can just set up and say, save view here. Then you can go and change and manipulate a few things and look at it. But you'll always have this recall view button, which takes you back to that save view that you just saved in order for you to take a screenshot again at a later point, maybe to show your progress. All right, next up, make screenshot. This actually, for me at least, does not work. It simply uh, puts a, a white TGA file, which is of no use to me. I'm not exactly sure why that happens, but I, I, I th it's happened to me on all graphics cards I've had, uh, both AMD and NVIDIA, and all both XP, Vista, and Windows 7. If anybody can figure out why that happens, they can let me know maybe in the comments, and I can append the video. Thank you. Uh, dumping model info will open up notepad with all the, the info on the currently open model that you could need bones, sequences, hitboxes, textures, and uh, some model information if it exists. It can be useful if you want to tinker with the actual model at a later date or recompile it. File associations does not work for some reason, at least on my machine. It absolutely craps the model out. <laughs> Interestingly enough. Um, yeah. yeah. I must also apologize if I sound a little blocked up at the moment of battling a small cold. Sorry about that. Anyway, next up on the list is set the sound folder. Now, this is actually important. You should navigate to your Steam installation. In my case, it's probably going to look much very different to yours. Uh, go to Steam Apps, Common, whatever. This is dependent now on the game you are currently viewing models for. If this is something like a Day of Defeat, you would have to go to the Day of Defeat sound folder. In our case, it's Half-Life, so let us go to the Half-Life folder, uh, Valve, and let's find sound and select that sound folder. Now that the sound folder is set, you can save options, which is going to save all the options to a file called hlmv.ini next to the actual executable itself, wherever you happen to have it saved. Uh, and that's going to be useful for us when we go to the sequences tab and play around with the events. Next up is the tools section, and these are both the tools I was speaking to you earlier on, uh, Studio MDL and Model Decompiler. Uh, simply point uh, this path to the executable for both and you will be set up and ready to decompile models and recompile them at will for the engine through these two buttons here so for the sake of argument let's just try this decompile the model now let's look for a model we're in the valve folder right now in this case let's take something simple like the baby head crab actually I'm going to copy it and paste it somewhere else because I don't want it to create all the subsequent files in this in the game folder. I'm going to place it in a, a little testing folder I have. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which one this was. Head crab I think it was. Yes baby head crab. And I'll just paste it there and open it. And you see a, a small screen there. I'm going to navigate back to that folder again. 
Dead crab, and here we have that MDL that I just pasted there, and it has decompiled everything that was once within this to its separate files. So you've got all the idle animations as SMDs, and you have the original baby head crab uh, mesh data. You have the image, which is case it's baby chrome, and you also have the QC file, which you can open up in a text editor and examine if you want. Okay, so much about that. Now you can also compile a model. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to actually, I should reopen that last folder I was in. Uh, projects, sorry. I am looking for gold source testing. Sorry about this. It's late at night, so I'm a little bit derp at the moment. Um, let me just rename this to head crab zero one, just for the sake of argument. No, if I go to tools, compile model. It's always going to look for a QC file because the QC file references everything else that it needs. I hit open. It's going to recompile a model that will be called. Um, ah, of course, it's actually it's not going to rename it. <laughs> you also have to rename it inside the file itself. So it would have to be zero one. Save such a thing like that, and then compile the model again. And now we should see a file with 001. I were to double click this now, and if my references are correctly set up, it should open like so. Now, what does the original one look like? I'm not actually sure. Let me see. Yep, the original one looks quite good too. Oop, there's a crash there, and another crash. You don't really have click and drag functionality with Jet South Live One of your unfortunately, which would always be awesome. But anyway, so much about the decompiling and compiling tools. They'll only work if your configured tools are correctly pointed towards the tools it needs. Uh, you can also edit a QC file, which basically opens up a QC file in Notepad. But I think much more useful is for you is to open up a QC file in Notepad plus plus along with the um, valve syntax highlighting for valve file types which makes it a lot easier to read things okay help pretty much self-explanatory now we must get on to the meat of this tutorial which is the tabs we we'll start off with the model display tab naturally and this if you're used to it all half-life model viewer for the source engine is pretty much the same you've got your wireframe display your flat shaded mode, your smooth shaded, and your texture shaded. You can affect the opacity of the overall model. You can show the hitboxes. You show bones. You show the attachments for things like weapons and such. You show the eye position. You show the ground that we saw earlier on. You can also mirror the model on the ground some cheap reflections. You can show the background and you can have a wireframe on shaded effect which is quite nifty. You can also scale the bones up. Let's say for instance we try scaling the bones. Here we have an uber stretched model. Now if we were to also scale the mesh by the same amount we would simply have a 200% size model. So, yep, here we go. Draw and poly simply just gives you the figure of the amount of polys that are drawn to the screen at the current time. And the body parts tab next up um, lets us select different body parts and also if the controller associated with it has any animation on a bone. In this case, the head is the only thing controlled for left and right animation. I don't believe the arm. The arm may have some. No, the arm has no animation associated with it. You can also select a sub model. 
and if the model had a second or third even skin associated with it you could switch the skin here which would change the overall texture which means you can have as many the same model in some occasions but a different texture to save on model space I guess over here you have some more information which is quite useful the kind of bones, the amount of textures it has, sequence um, attachments and so and so on actually I'm going to open up a, a recent model Barney and I'm going to also turn off wireframe let's zoom in here nice and close to his head and show that he also has a controller for his mouth which you can control as well as of course his head which needs to turn from left to right occasionally he doesn't have more than one skin and he doesn't have more than one sub model but he also has a gun part which I believe is just an attachment for his arm uh, under the texture section now it simply brings us to a 2D view you can use the scale textures to make it easier for you to see what you're actually doing in the drop down list you can actually select from a list of textures here we have a pistol with its basic texture now you'll note here we have some extra ch uh, check boxes one of them being chrome if any of the textures you create for a model has chrome in the name be it prefix suffix or just chrome at all um, it's going to have this chrome flag checked which basically provides an effect in the engine which I can show on Barney's helmet it's this weird chrome effect the infamous chrome effect I guess from Half-Life you can call it uh, an interestingly faked effect but it cold nonetheless uh, yes and you'll notice that the rest of them do not have chrome checked only this chrome uh, helmet actually has the chrome checked additive is for is one of the transparency settings along with transparent uh, additive you would use I guess for, sim for example on a car if you have glass in the window maybe you don't want it to be fully transparent but tinted or maybe just have scratches and dirt on it you would use something like an additive texture for transparent you can use that for selecting certain parts of the image that are transparent using a certain color key um, show UV map is going to show a UV map in this case this item doesn't have a UV map but let's, uh, let's look at the hand the hand has a UV map on it you can overlay the UV map on top of the actual texture to see where exactly it's doing this so you can see clearly here that's where the thumb would be and the fingers were here and the arm extends up here you have the option to do anti-alias lines but I've never noticed it doing anything <laughs> on my end um, if there is more than one mesh you can select that here as you can see you can import a texture to add it's going to tell you that it must be the same size as the original that you're trying to currently replace you can export the current texture for editing and you can export the UV map which will export a UV stamp which you can use for painting inside the lines if you want to create the texture from scratch in Photoshop or GIMP or whichever program you prefer to use um, next up is an interesting tab sequences where you get to view the animation of your currently selected model if it has one currently Barney has idle selected so from the sequence the animation sequence drop down you can select say for instance walk here we go looks like he's doing a nice little chicken walk there the head action <laughs> you can use the slider here to control the rate at which it moves either to be fast or slow motion you can stop it and you can scrub through each frame to inspect it or simply set a desired frame here you also have some information telling you which sequence you've selected the count of frames of the currently selected sequence the frame rate of the currently selected sequence um, the blends and the number of events that it has so you can see we have two events with a sound now you notice that we have this play sound from earlier on if I were to hit play you'll notice that a sound is played along with 
the actual movement of the actual sequence. So we have two different steps that are changed, two different events. One is played at frame 18 for I guess the second step, and one is played at frame 3 for the first step. And okay, let's find a view model for this tab. The weapon origin requires uh, something like a view model in this case. Let's take the crowbar, and then we have to reset the view and turn off the ground. Ooh, sorry. And here we go. Now we can set the animation to something we would know. You know for instance, the crowbar attack animation. Um, here we can show the crosshair. It's a little bit hard to see, so let's change the crosshair color to yellow, for instance. That's where we would generally aim for. Um, you can show guidelines as well, which give you a, an indication of what area you want to be aiming for. You can also change the origin of where this um, view model is placed. You can click by testing origin, you can see we moved it over there, you can move it over some more, just proof of concept, there we go. And you can move it up and down using the X and Y origin as well. You can add these offsets as well to your QC file if you plan to recompile the model at a later stage. And this brings us to our last screen, which is full screen. You can simply set a resolution, hit full screen, and you can use the shortcut keys to um, move it around. I actually just know one up there, and that's ground. <laughs> I should know more, I guess, but I don't use full screen that often. So, yeah, I need to escape to get back out. And that's pretty much Jed's Half-Life Model Viewer for the Goal Source engine. If you feel I've missed anything, or if you can point something out to me that I should have added to this tutorial, please let me know. You'll find a PDF and a document on the website, sourcemodding.com. And the actual tutorial as well will be on the page, of course. And any pertinent information will be linked in the YouTube video. I thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I'm looking forward to having you join me in the next one. Take care.